There's always nothing better you can do with your week than carve out time with people who don't follow Jesus. Our diaries quickly fill up, including filling up with church things. As a church, we don't want that. We'd love people to say no to some extra church things if that would mean they can regularly meet up with unbelievers. God has made us a community and he's given us Jesus. And because there's just nothing better in life than having Jesus, God has called us not to keep Jesus to ourselves in a holy huddle, but to share love, share friendship, share Jesus. That means investing in some people around us, carving out time for real friendships. Last year, some of our leaders were working on this. Michael's been carving out time to be with girlfriends. They're doing that, realising that it's not healthy for any of us to have no friends who don't follow Jesus. We're praying that this year, every one of us will have real growing friendships with unbelievers and that that will bring us joy as well as bringing Jesus glory. Other than our Sunday services, our most important gathering is our central prayer meeting. Jesus taught that we should come to his dad as our own dad in heaven. He said, if we ask, we will receive because God is generous and loves to give us good gifts. So when a church prays, it's like adding rocket fuel to a spaceship. Prayer is the fuel that makes churches grow more like Jesus and brings others to come to know Jesus. Prayer is where the power is because God works powerfully in answer to his people's prayers. We have a vision for more and more of us gathering to pray. We're going to work hard this year to plan prayer meetings which give you space to ask the things of God you want to ask and which any of us can feel totally at home to come along to. If there's something that's made it hard for you to come along in the past, please tell me or Andrew about it so we can see if we can fix it. Imagine our church building on the first Thursday evening of every month filled with the joyful, mournful, pleading prayers of 18-year-olds and 80-year-olds, of life group members, leaders, people totally new to church, of people praying in English, of people praying in other languages, of long, loud prayers, quick, quiet prayers, and people praying silently in their heads. That's our vision. We're excited by it. More and more of us getting together every month to talk to our wonderfully generous staff. We want to be a church of people who are growing more like Jesus. To do that, we need each other. God has designed church to be a place where we build each other up to be more and more like Jesus. One of the main ways we do that is through our life groups. Life groups are midweek groups that are all about friendships that help us follow Jesus. We want to be connecting the gospel to each other's lives and putting it into practice together. There are lots of people across church we don't know that well and can't know that well. In life groups, we commit to relationships with a small group of people. These are people we can see every week. We share the ups and downs of life with each other. We work out together what it means to live for Christ in the different circumstances we're facing. We pray for each other. All of that means that life groups are the main place where everyday pastoral care happens at Phillies. Life groups are great for all kinds of people, whether you're looking into what it means to follow Jesus, or you've been following him for decades. We'd love an even wider range of people to be part of a life group this year. This could include those who don't have English as their first language, or those who work and socialise nearer to the city centre, or those with children who could come along for part of the time. It could include you. All our life groups have a fresh start in the new year. If you've not been part of one yet, this is an ideal time to join one. There are about 150 of us who make up the Phillies Church family. But we are just a small local church in a global family of churches made up of millions of Christians worldwide. We can't know all of these people personally, of course, but we are privileged to be partnered with a small number of them. Groups of Christians in Madrid, Warrington, the northwest of England more widely, and Richard and Catherine East in London. At the end of the Book of Colossians, 
Paul writes a series of greetings from various Christians he knows to the Christians at Colossae. These people clearly know the Colossian Christians. Paul says that Epaphras is resting in prayer for them and is working hard for them. Aristarchus sends them his greetings. Tychicus and Onesimus are on their way to visit them and will fill them in on Paul's news. We'd love it if during 2023, we can all say we know who the churches and other Christians we partner with are and what they are doing so that we can wrestle in prayer for them. Maybe some of us will go to visit our partners and they will come to visit us. It's easy to become wrapped up in our own lives and forget that God is a God of all the world and he is building his kingdom in every street, city and country. Hearing what God is doing in other cities and countries, visiting those Christians and praying for them regularly are great ways to help us to see the bigger picture of God's kingdom. We love having children and young people at church. From our youngest, right the way up to those who are nearly adults, we're praying that they'd follow Jesus for their whole lives. To help them stick with him, there are four types of people that we want each young person to know. The first and the most important is Jesus himself. We want our kids not just to know about him, but to know him. That's God's work and we're praying he would be doing it as they regularly hear from Jesus in the Bible, taught in a way that's easy for them to understand and connect with their lives. The second group of people is friends at church. We want every young person to enjoy spending time with other people in our church family. The third is older Christians who are showing them what it looks like to live the Christian life. The Christian life is caught as well as taught. So we want our kids to know Christians who are more mature than them and particularly to know them well enough to see what difference Jesus makes in their lives. The last is friends who don't yet know Jesus. Whether it's friends from nursery, their class at school, the football team or the singing group, we want our young people to have friends who aren't Christians and to want them to hear the good news about Jesus too. Our operations are the practical things that make church work. Jesus has given us, the church, a really exciting mission to reach the lost with the good news of Jesus. At Phillies, we sometimes liken our church to a lifeboat, trying to reach people so they might be saved. Our practical operations mostly happen below decks, out of sight, keeping the ship in good repair. Some of it's hard work, but it's immensely important because without it, the lifeboat stops and there are drowning people out there. Our practical operations keep the ship running smoothly so that the news about Jesus can be heard. If you're part of our church, you're probably already helping out with the practical operations. All of the crew of the lifeboat spend some time working to maintain the ship. There are things we can all do, like helping put some Bibles away, stacking some chairs, doing the washing up and maybe giving someone a lift. All these little things help facilitate the good news of Jesus. Some in our church give significant time to operations. They do long shifts below deck and that hard work facilitates the Jesus focused work we do as a church. We want to be a church family that celebrates pitching in and helping out practically because those practical operations help us bring glory to Jesus.